Today we're talking about some very common intermediate player mistakes. Once you really get a handle on these things, your game will change for the better. I don't want to waste any time. Let's get started with the first one. So here's a big one that comes up a lot. Sometimes people get stuck right here, right behind the line like this. So not on the line, but a little bit behind it. And then when they get a floater right in front of them, they'll do something like this. So Ryan's going to pop one up for me right in front of me. And I'm going to show you what they do. And it's that right there. It's a downward swipe that people do. So they'll go like this right in front of them like that. There's a couple things you can do to stop doing this. First of all, if you swipe down like this when the ball is right in front of you, that ball is going to go straight down because your paddle is closing down. Whereas if the ball is up here, right, right here, you're far more likely to hit over the net because the ball is much higher, but also your paddle face doesn't have to close down as much. It's a couple things you can do. First and foremost, if you're dicking back and forth, forth with someone and they pop it up, step up here to the kitchen and then take the ball. You have to learn how to give yourself a little bit of that footwork so that you're not stuck behind the line all the time. So do this, step up, and then you can really attack the ball a lot easier. The other thing is that if you're getting a high ball or a floater that's right in front of you like this, oftentimes it's not a case of just attacking right there. It's a case of getting out of the way. So instead of swiping the ball like this out in front of us, what I'm going to do instead is step to my left and then hit the ball kind of from the side like this, almost more of a baseball -y kind of swing. So let me demonstrate that. So we're going to dink back and forth here. Ryan's going to hit one high for me. I'm going to get out of the way and then attack. Now, that's the important part here is that footwork. So if you're behind here like this, get up first before you attack and then try to get out of the way so that you can hit it more from the side. You've got the whole court available to you. Learn to use it properly. A lot of people, what they'll do for obvious reasons, they'll avoid the sidelines. Now, you shouldn't be aiming for the sidelines. You should give yourself a little bit of a buffer. But what most people do is they give themselves way too much of a buffer. So learn to use this sideline over here. Stop being afraid of hitting it towards the sideline. It can give you a huge advantage, not just if you're, if you're hitting kind of dinking straight away with thirds, but also with cross court dinks. Focus on where you're actually hitting the ball in relation to the sideline. So do this just for practice. Purposefully aim for the sideline over here. And if you don't get it right on the sideline, it's not that big of a deal, but just practice this and focus on what it feels like to hit the ball at least somewhat near the sideline, if not completely on the sideline. If you're having trouble doing that and you're hitting it one to two feet inside the court still, that means you're giving yourself way too much of a buffer and you need to have the confidence and the courage to actually go for the sideline. So a lot, a lot of people, what happens is th they'll be thinking like this and they'll do everything kind of in the center or maybe a little bit to the side and you're not getting the appropriate angles because when you do that and you don't aim for the sideline, you're getting no angles. When you don't get those kinds of angles, you're not gonna mess your opponent up very easily. Understanding flow and tempo with cross court dinking or in other words, stop hitting it to the same spot. If you get into a cross court dinking rally with your opponent, there is a, there's a couple of things that you need to realize while it's happening. Are you winning the rally? So figure out what the tempo is. Do they have the advantage? Are you doing a lot of short hops? Short hops are very defensive. Understand when you are losing a cross court rally and then change your dink. Stop hitting to the same spot. Because if you're losing a, dink, a dinking rally, that means hitting it to the same spot is what's causing it, mostly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kinda just pretend like I'm losing a rally against Ryan here, okay? So it's like, oh boy. I'm losing, I'm losing, dink to a different spot. So I go to his forehand. Now I'm gonna go to the sideline over there. And now all of a sudden, I'm the one that has the advantage, okay? Stop dinking to the same spot if you're losing the rally. If you're winning a rally, then please, by all means, continue the dinking rally, of course. But if you're losing it, you have to change something quickly. Just smacking it. This is a big one, especially on the third. If you're getting better in this sport, you have to start learning to do third shots. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. However, 
don't just hit the ball. So actually, I'm gonna serve here, and when Ryan returns, I'm gonna show you kind of what happens. It's just a smack. I just smacked the ball. No thought, no reasoning, no strategy, nothing. All I did is just, I just hit the ball, and that is killing you if you're doing that. So again, I'm gonna serve. I'm just gonna hit the ball randomly like that. That is destroying your game. You are not gonna get better if you're doing that on your third shot. So to help you with this, take 50% off. So imagine what you typically do on your third shot and take half of that off. So I'm just gonna hit it 50% softer instead. And that is a great way to get started with a third shot drop. So again, imagine what you typically do and then just take 50% off. And if it's still high, whatever, don't worry about it. The point is that you have to start getting used to changing your behavior on the third shot. If you don't start changing the stuff, you're never gonna have those advanced skills and techniques and strategies that are going to help you get to a higher level. So here's the next question. What do you do with your thirds now? Let's say that you're actually doing your third shot drops, so you're really getting used to it, it's turning out really well. What now? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna serve, and I'm gonna hit third shot, great. That's pretty decent, you know, not too bad. But what now? So if this is you, and you're just staying back here like this, you are destroying yourself. What comes after a third is footwork. So what do I mean by that? Well, watch this instead. Okay, so what'd you notice there? The, the, the difference is that I noticed when I hit a decent third and I moved up a little bit. This is the most complicated part of pickleball, one of them, okay? Besides the scoring, of course. If you stay back there, you are not threatening your opponent. The third shot is not threatening. There's nothing threatening about it. The only threatening part is if you, if you increase the pace or you do topspin, so a third shot drive or a third shot dive. But a regular third that a lot of intermediate players do is not going to mess up your opponent. Thus, the only thing that can mess up your opponent is your positioning moving into the net. Now, if you hit a good third, do you just want to rush right in to the line? Well, maybe, maybe not. But you need to make some sort of progress because if you don't, then your opponent can have an absolute heyday. So let's do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna tell Ryan, I'm not gonna move up. I'm gonna stay on the baseline and we're gonna let him do whatever he wants, so watch. Okay, so serve. I'm gonna do my third. I'm gonna stay back here. Now he can do whatever he wants, whatever he wants. He can take his time, he can do a top swim roll like what he just did there, which was way worse than his return. And now I'm stuck with a worse shot than I had previously. This is why coming, making some kind of progress into the transition zone is going to help you out immensely. And it's, it's very weird because it's kind of aggressive, but that's the point, okay? So, notice what Ryan had to do. He had to dink the ball. The reason is because I was standing right here. If he were to hit it high or do anything like that, then I would be able to just put it away. Now he can do that same kind of roll, of course, and that has to do more with your technique on your third, of course, okay? But again, watch. I'm gonna make some kind of progress. Nice, did something. You have to put pressure on your opponent with your body. This is what keeps them from doing anything too safe, okay? So please remember that, it's so, so important. Try not to let the ball bounce behind you. This is a tough one. And you know what? It gets me every now and then too. Try your best to volley the ball or short hop right out in front of you, okay? So notice how I'm taking all these balls out in front of me, including that volley. Now I could have let that volley bounce, right? But if it had, it would have bounced well behind me. So again, that bounced in front of me, so that's okay. That has to be a volley. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Look at that. So do you see how, see the angle of that volley coming in, right? 
Notice how I let it bounce? It bounced behind me and that increases the difficulty of the shot significantly. So you have to have the confidence of volleying these shots well below your waistline. So if we keep going here, that bounced in front of me so I can short hop that. Same with this one, I can short hop that just fine. That one, yeah, no thanks. Volley that one. Bounce in front of me, that's fine. Bounce in front of me, that's also fine. Okay. That has to be a volley. There you go, finally. Notice how low that ball was going. Have to volley that because if I let it short hop over there, it's just gonna make it so much harder. The ball's bouncing at my feet and so on. All right, blocks, bangers, what do you do? Well, you're probably doing too much. If someone's hitting hard shots at you, the less you do, the better, okay? It's, it's, it's a simple concept, obviously, a lot more difficult to put into practice, but you have to stop trying so much. The point of a block, re, what you do, you wanna get your paddle into the pathway of the ball and try to kinda of angle your paddle down a little bit if you can. So you really don't wanna be like this. You have to really consciously rotate your paddle down to get that ball to go down. So focus on doing as little as humanly possible. So Ryan's gonna hit a ball at me and I'm just gonna block it. Okay. What I'm doing is focusing on <laughs> just getting the ball out in front of me and angling it down just a little bit and that is it. No swing, no backswing, no follow through, nothing. I'm trying to do as little as humanly possible. Okay. As you saw, I let one of those go. It's a lot easier to let those go if you're just in this really calm state and you're not really trying to do too much. And if you're swinging that stuff all the time, then you're more likely gonna swing at the out balls as well. Oh, wow. I want you to notice how I freeze at the end of some of these strokes. Notice how I'm just kind of froze in here. Really helps to solidify the calmness of it. Woo. Stop trying to do so much. <laughs> I know it seems a bit counterintuitive. It's like you gotta do so much to beat the bangers. No, 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 actually the less you do, the better. Now, as you've seen, some of these have popped up a little bit. So I'm gonna focus on really getting them down now. So pointing the paddle down like that is what's gonna help you do that. But again, you're not gonna have time to angle the paddle down if you're taking these big, ridiculous backswings. That's why you gotta stay punchy and short with your strokes. Okay, nice and punchy, short, punchy. Okay, the ultimate mistake, footwork. I know it's boring. I know it seems a little silly. I know it's not very fun, but if you wanna get better, you have to start focusing on your footwork. It is everything. There is no paddle. No sports drink, no pickle juice, no nothing, nothing you can buy that will ever increase your footwork besides awareness and practice. Your feet control pretty much everything. I want to start with a couple of things that are very simple that will really, really help. So what I'm gonna do, Ryan's gonna stand a little bit closer actually. We're just gonna think back and forth. Every single time I hit the ball, I want to get my feet back into a ready position before he strikes it. Sometimes that can be a little bit of an ambitious goal, but I just wanna show you what this looks like. So we're just gonna dink. I'm gonna hit the ball, and I'm gonna get back into the right position where I was. It's very subtle, but I'm right here in my right position. Okay, and he's gonna dink the ball, and then I'm gonna move, get back, hit, get back, hit, get back, hit, get back, get back. That's something that you can start with that is very, very simple. 
and it's going to pay dividends in a huge way as you get better. Please trust me on this. It is a big, big deal. If you want to take it to the next level, try to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a hop in order to balance out your weight. So again, I'm going to hit the ball and then just do a little hop, help me balance out my weight like that. So these, notice the little subtle hop that I'm doing. You really don't have to do this. A lot of people do, especially if they're tennis players, because it helps to really balance out your weight. My paddle is always out in front of me like this. My body, my whole positioning, my whole aura is symmetrical. So how you want to think of it, symmetrical, okay? So, and then what this does is that I'm in the same spot every single time when that ball is coming over. And thus I'm starting from the same spot. What people do is they get foot tangled, they get spaghetti feet, and they do something like this where they'll stay here like that, and then they're watching the ball because they're so scared of what's gonna happen with the ball. The main thing you have to understand is that the moment the ball leaves your paddle, you are no longer in control of what happens. And you have to learn how to relinquish that feeling and stop trying to control so much. So I'm gonna think back and forth here, and I'm just gonna to say to myself, you know what, that ball, it's on its way over, there's nothing I can do. And even if I were to pop it up, I'm still, going to do the same thing, get back into my red position every single time, because what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? You've already hit the ball over. You can't do anything. So what people do is they get spaghetti feet and they do this. So they'll hit the ball over and then they'll stay there because they're so curious as to what's happening with the ball. It's killing people, absolutely destroying people. This is why I talk about footwork all the time. This is why I talk about feet first, swing later. It's why I rant about these things is because it, <laughs> truly helps you in enormous, enormous ways. So what I'm gonna do is I show you, show the same principle to you, but back on the baseline. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but with third shots on the baseline. And I want you to notice what happens with my footwork before I strike the ball. Okay, so just have someone feed you. Notice that, just notice those little steps. Notice how I was getting my feet in position before I even thought about striking that ball. Now, as you get better, those things will kind of combine naturally, okay? But for the most part, yeah, you want to make sure that you're getting your feet in position first and foremost. And you don't have to do these hoppy things that I do, but, you know, it just kind of helps me. Uh, those little hops. Those little hops help me to get balanced again. I hope that was helpful guys. Feet first, swing later, focus on all these things. It's going to help immensely with your game. This is how you get to an advanced level. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.